Good morning. My name is Chris Ndikumana. I'm the host of the Kanguka broadcast. You are about to listen to today's broadcast translated from Kirundi to English. Be blessed. Today's Monday and I'd like to remind our new listeners that Kanguka is a Kirundi word, the language of Burundi, and it means wake up. The broadcast is available every weekday at 4 a.m. on the Kanguka website kanguka.com or on the Kanguka English channel on YouTube or on the Kanguka mobile app. Just type Kanguka, that's K-A-N-G-U-K-A. I want to express my gratitude to everyone who takes the time to pray for the Kanguka team. Every time you're in prayer, remember to mention the Kanguka team because we truly need your prayers. Your prayer is a very precious contribution to us. We wouldn't be where we are today without the prayers of the saints. And every time you pray for us, also pray for the partners of Kanguka, the men and women who are financially supporting this work. May I am bless you. As you know, every Monday, I keep reminding you of the guiding principles of Kanguka. Those three guiding principles have transformed the lives of many listeners. If you try to follow these three principles, your life will be transformed. You cannot remain the same person. The first principle is to accept the will of God, even if it's different from our own will. The second is to pray every day. And the third, it's forbidden to complain, instead we must give thanks in everything. Today I'm going to talk about the second principle which is to pray every day. As I often say, praying is like breathing. But it's not just about praying, it's about praying in the right way. If you want to be sure that your prayer is heard, you must first be a child of God. If you're not a child of God, your prayer carries no weight. God listens to his children. You might argue that everyone is a child of God, but that's not true. That's not what the Word of God tells us. Everyone is created by God. Every person is a creature of God, but not necessarily a child of God. According to John chapter 1, verse 12, only those who have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, those who have received Jesus into their lives, are called children of God. You can read that in your Bibles. Whoever received the light, that is Jesus, has received the power to become a child of God. We cannot remain as we were before. So first, you must be a child of God. You can become a child of God, but to do so, you must accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Today, we're going to read from Psalms chapter 145, verses 18 to 19. Verse 18 says, The Lord is near to all who call upon Him, to all who call upon Him in truth. First, you must call upon Him, you must call upon Him in truth. It's not just any prayer that brings you closer to God, but you must call upon Him in truth. What does insincere prayer look like? It's the prayer filled with hypocrisy or manipulation. There are Christians who come before God to manipulate Him. You want to use beautiful words, you rely on your promises. But God wants you to come like a child, with humility, sincerity, and above all, with faith. Because the Word of God says that without faith, it is impossible to please Him. It's written in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. We cannot please God without faith. So, you must have faith and believe that God listens to you and is capable of doing what you want Him to do, because God has no limits. Therefore, it's important to come before God with sincerity. If you read verse 19, Psalms chapter 145, verse 19, the verse says, He will fulfill the desire of those who fear Him, He also will hear their cry and save them. In this verse, we see that God fulfills the desires of those who fear Him. The condition is to fear God. When you fear God and you are humble, your desires will be fulfilled. Here, we're not talking about just any desire. Because those who do not fear God, they have carnal desires. But the one who fears God, seeks the will of God. That's the difference. What matters is not the desires themselves, but the nature of your desires. If you fear God, it means you want His glory. You want to please Him. And your desires to honor God, to glorify God, to exalt God, will be fulfilled because He fulfills the desires of those who fear Him, and He hears their cry and saves them. God hears your cries. God hears what you say even if you don't see any change. Sometimes, we can pray and see nothing at all. There is no sign of God's attention. And the devil mocks you. He shows you that God is not with you. But you must have faith. You must persevere. Sometimes, God remains silent. I would like to tell you that the silence of God does not mean He's not listening to you. He is there. He hears what you say. All he wants is your sincerity, your humility, and your faith. And you need to know especially that when you cry out, he hears your voice. I remember the time when I prayed for a month, two months, three months without any sign of God's attention, without any vision. But I persevered because I knew this word is real. I knew that the Lord is near to those who call upon him in truth. And I was calling upon him, and I knew I was sincere. I also knew that he fulfills the desires of those who fear him. And I knew that I feared him. I knew that he hears their cry. And I was convinced that he heard my cry. Even if I saw nothing, I didn't give up, I persevered, I continued. And finally, he visited me in an extraordinary way and he saved me. So don't give up, don't abandon, persevere, because God is in control. He hears your prayers. 
Even if nothing changes, persevere, remain in integrity, remain in righteousness, for God is faithful. It's important that we know that our God is faithful. Maybe you won't get exactly what you want. But if you are right, if you pray in the name of Jesus, if you are a child of God, if you are sincere and humble, you will certainly receive something from God. It may be different from what you want, but you will certainly receive something from God. And everything that comes from God is always good. We're now in the teaching portion of the broadcast and we're going to continue our study of the book of Ezra. I've mentioned before that we're going to continue with the book of Ezra, right after the book of Chronicles because it's the same author. I've shown you the evidence that it's the same author. If you look at the last two verses of the book of Chronicles and the first two verses of the book of Ezra, you'll see that it's the same thing, and it's the same author continuing. The book of Ezra is divided into ten chapters, and I urge you to read all ten chapters. I won't comment on every chapter, but it's very important to read all the chapters because we'll finish studying the book of Ezra by this Friday. Last Friday, I showed you the evidence that it's the same author. It's important to understand that these books were not divided in chapters and verses when they were originally written. It's those who prepared the Bible who divided it into chapters and verses to make it easier for us to read and reference. So I told you that this first chapter talks about King Cyrus, the king of Persia, who was guided by God even though he was a pagan. The word of God says that he himself took the initiative to free the people of God, but it was to fulfill the prophecy of Jeremiah. The prophecy said that after 70 years of captivity, the people of God would be liberated. You can read this prophecy in Jeremiah chapter 25, verse 11, and in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 10. You remember that we saw in 2 Chronicles how King Nebuchadnezzar took Israel captive because of their sins. It was sin that caused the people of Israel to be delivered into the hands of Nebuchadnezzar. He destroyed the city, he destroyed Jerusalem, he destroyed the temple of God, and he took everything that was valuable from the house of God. But if you read all these chapters, you'll see that he kept everything for seventy years. All the instruments of the temple of God, all the utensils, were kept, and God made the king return them. It wasn't just Jeremiah who had spoken of the liberation of the people of God, even Isaiah spoke of it. If you read in Isaiah chapter 44, verse 28, it's important to see that everything that happened was in God's plan. Isaiah chapter 44, verse 28 says, Who says of Cyrus, He is my shepherd, and he shall perform all my pleasure, saying to Jerusalem, You shall be built, and to the temple, your foundation shall be laid. It's very interesting to see that Isaiah's prophecy is more specific because it even mentions the name of Cyrus. The name of Cyrus was mentioned years before. It is written, Who says of Cyrus, He is my shepherd. Here, we're not talking about an Israelite, we're not talking about a Jew, but we're talking about a pagan, the king of Persia. He is the one whom God made his shepherd. The lesson to draw here is that if God wants to do something, nothing can stop him. God can use your enemy, God can use a pagan, God can use anything. Remember Elijah when he was in the desert. God used a raven to bring him bread and meat. Normally, ravens like meat. But when God commanded the raven, it brought meat because it was under God's orders. What's important is to be in the fear of God, in integrity, in God's perfect will, and God can use anything. Nothing can resist the hand of God. That's the lesson to draw here. God used Cyrus. In this first chapter of Ezra, in the first and second verses, we see that it's Cyrus himself who speaks. There's not even a hint of regret. He speaks himself, he says, All the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord God of heaven has given me. And he has commanded me to build him a house at Jerusalem which is in Judah. It's written in verse 2. It's very impressive to see a pagan speaking of the Lord, the God of Israel, because he was under God's orders. It was the time of liberation, and we know that it was Daniel who prayed, he fasted because he saw that it was the time for the prophecy to be fulfilled. If you see that it's the time for the prophecy to be fulfilled, you must pray for it to be fulfilled. There's another thing I'd like to show you from verse 8 to verse 11. Ezra chapter 1, verses 8 to 11. It is written, Cyrus king of Persia brought them out by the hand of Mithridath the treasurer, and counted them out to Sheshbazzar the prince of Judah. Here we see that he returned everything. Verse 9 says, This is the number of them, 30 gold platters, 1,000 silver platters, 29 knives. All this was kept for 70 years. God ensured that all this was kept by the pagans, and when the time came, they got it all back. 30 gold basins, 410 silver basins. All this was kept by the king of Persia. And under God's command, he returned everything to the people of God. God can restore everything the devil has stolen from you. If you are in God's perfect plan, if you are in obedience, God can restore everything. 
Verse 11 says that all the articles of gold and silver were 5,400, and they took all of this from Babylon to Jerusalem upon the return from captivity. This reminds me of the word in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12 which says that God watches over his word to perform it. If you are upright, if you are on the right path, in sanctification, God will restore you and he will fulfill everything he has said about you. He will fulfill his promise. God willing, will continue tomorrow. I wish you all a great day and may I am bless you. If you're blessed or transformed by Kanguka teachings, you can send us a WhatsApp audio on plus two five six seven eight one three seven seven three three seven.